Hi, my name is Ian Khan. After meeting with hundreds of professionals, experts, industry influencers, and others through 2016 and 17, I found a severe need across the board to help figure out what the fuss was all about, what this new technology was all about, what blockchain was all about. Sometime after the year 2008, an entity or a group of people under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto came out with the famous white paper that highlighted a new electronic form of currency that would independently change everything about money. A new revolution had begun. Blockchain was the core technology foundation of this new currency. And this revolution has now culminated into a global phenomenon where governments, private and public sector firms are embarking on creating more value, more change, and solving some of the world's biggest problems. In the middle of the Arabian Peninsula, one of the most well-known cities is Dubai, a fast-growing metropolis and the epicenter of change in the Middle East. Dubai has always been synonymous with progress, challenging the status quo, and dreaming big. The government of Dubai, with its vision of tomorrow, powered by technology, has embarked on an aggressive plan to enable a blockchain-based government by 2020. The UAE also has a national plan to enable blockchain across all seven emirates by the year 2030. Don't fear from technology. Be smart on how to deal with these technologies. Doesn't matter if it's a blockchain or uh, big data or any type of technologies, even our smart devices. As long as we know why we are using it. If you don't know how to use them, go and educate yourself. Make sure that you utilize the, the best of, of these technologies for your own benefit. We need to be wise enough to understand what these technologies will add value to my life. And for me personally, as long as it will make my life much simpler and much easier, I will go for it. From manufacturing to logistics, transportation, healthcare, and real estate, every sector, every industry is set to undergo a radical shift in the next few years, potentially because of blockchain. Yet, we do not understand blockchain to an extent where we could really be comfortable with it. To date, technology has been a domain of computer programmers, experts, and leaders alone. But just like blockchain promises democratization of technology, we need to break down the barriers to understand blockchain itself. We must find out what blockchain really is, and more than that, how it can be defined by what value it brings. A blockchain is essentially a breakthrough in database technology. It's a, a new kind of database system that because of its architecture enables everybody on the system to trust the system. It's a tool for decentralizing relationships, contracts, and decision making so that they aren't mediated uh, by gatekeepers of various kinds. It's a very powerful idea. Despite the various explanations that blockchain is defined as, it's still hard to sometimes comprehend the actual technology. And for that, we must understand it beyond just its architecture. One of the most innovative and forward-thinking countries in the world is also one of the tiniest European nations, Estonia. Estonia kind of had blockchain databases before the, the term blockchain was coined. But uh, I would have to say that Estonia is not a blockchain nation, so we don't run fully on blockchain. We just happen to be uh, in a position where we created similar databases that are now referred to as blockchain. 
uh, technologies. And we use that uh, in our people's registry and uh, to run our state uh, databases and systems. One of the other benefits of blockchain is also mass collaboration and the ease of sharing information to create value. The Netherlands, with its Dutch blockchain coalition, is spearheading efforts to create global awareness and impact. It's a missing piece to support collaboration between different companies, between different governments uh, in a supply chain. It can help you to work together and to uh, give you as a person a better uh, user experience and make new things possible. And yet, where would we be without really addressing the need for us humans to live a life of acknowledgement, respect, dignity and value? Maybe blockchain can help us realize our true human potential. For me, blockchain is going to help me become more me. It's going to celebrate my individuality. I feel like the IP of who we are and our ideas will have value and meaning, and I think that's going to be a huge shift. The idea of blockchain being a radical new technology that can address many different challenges we currently face as people across the world is sometimes hard to accept. How can one technology, often confused with Bitcoin, have so many different applications? What then are some of the possibilities of blockchain and how can we really use it beyond just financial transactions? There are literally thousands of projects that uh, people are building out. Identity systems, reputation systems, governance tools, accounting systems. For us it was just uh, the kind of financial benefit and the ease of actually accessing digital services or public services that you don't have to go to the tax man and stay there for you know, two hours and sign a piece of paper that you could do it from your computer. It's just comfort and it saves you a lot of time. Uh, also, it saves you financing. When we started the Smart Dubai initiative in 2014, we continued with this kind of research exercise to see what are the uh, advanced technologies, emerging technologies that will take Dubai to its next level. You know that in Dubai we started digitization of our government uh, in 2000. So we've been into like in now almost two decades in digitizing our infrastructure. We know today whenever anyone talk about blockchain, they think about the financial sector. But we dig deeper. What blockchain is enabling us is doing something like social goods. If you, for example, look into what the United Nations are doing, or the World Wildlife Fund using the blockchain technology to prevent overfishing in the South Pacific or to prevent children trafficking by using blockchain technology, then you can see that there are really kind of societal problems which can be addressed or are currently addressed in, in prototypes by blockchain implementations. From efficiency to identity management, financial transactions and more, there seems to be a vast range of applications. They also say that blockchain works as a tool for accountability, recording every transaction, an immutable, unalterable, and permanent record of things. This in fact helps with tracking information because it's always available on blockchain. Can industry benefit from this? Perhaps one of the big challenges that creative artists face can be solved with blockchain-related technologies. So many examples of how it can change uh, the music industry. I mean, a very simple example is if you've signed a contract with somebody for, say, a record deal or a publishing deal, um, it's all about percentages and it's about at this point this happens, at this point this happens, this person gets paid when this is recouped. Anytime any artist has ever audited uh, a label, they've always found money. So I think there's something in being able to digitize your contract into smart contracts to help you interface with the services of the future. One of the, the biggest bugbears in the music industry that's failed time and time again is to try to create a verified, uh, authorised 
global database of music, of songs, a repertoire. And it's failed time and time again because there's, it's been about ownership. It's been about, this is mine, we're going to try and do this all to ourselves. But in opening that up and becoming a, an open database where people can author that and attribute their worth to that and potentially be a part of that, that payment in the future also, makes these things possible. I feel finally we can, we can create a music ecosystem that is worthy of the music that we love. Content creators can now be compensated for their hard work and finally fight the war with piracy, which costs the music industry billions of dollars every year. But can you and I as content creators benefit with a technology such as blockchain as well? We are putting the contents of Wikipedia plus an extra million articles that we've added to Wikipedia on the blockchain. What that means is that if somebody creates a new article and adds it to the database, they actually mine by doing that some tokens. We call them IQ tokens. What that means is that you become a co-owner. Uh, you have a financial stake in the creation and the quality of knowledge. It seems like challenges within government, banking, finance, and even real estate could now have an answer to create a higher rate of return on efforts, work, and productivity in general. One of our projects is to add efficiency in our reconciliation system between uh, bank uh, accounts. Normally, the, the, this kind of transaction takes almost 45 days. And we thought by implementing blockchain, it will add 30 to 40 percent efficiency. But it gave us 100 percent. It dropped that time from 45 days to zero. So why not? transferring this experience to the rest transactions in the government, whether it be internally, in our, for instance, HR transactions, procurement transaction, but also uh, the transaction for the users. Why I should wait like for days or months to buy a house? Why it's not only like a matter of pressing a button? Just imagine how complicated bureaucracies are, right? And translating that into code, which is what's required by putting those operations on the blockchain, sounds like a very tall order. There is a natural tension, actually, between government operations in general and the blockchain, because what the blockchain is, is disintermediating relationships between individuals. Distributed, disintermediated relationships, a distributed ledger, so many ways in which blockchain is defined today. But at the epicenter of every industry, services, products, and a profession is a pivotal need, something that forms the foundation of everything that we all inadvertently have a need for, trust. And when it comes to the complex workings of governments across the world, the need for consensus. First, you have to find uh, the trust in your citizens, that they trust the government with their data. It's a psychological thing to, to actually earn the trust. And then you have to have a very rigid uh, system of infrastructure with these databases that we can actually access uh, different data, pull it together. I think these are the first steps. It's definitely not an easy journey, but uh, to stay competitive, I do think it's necessary. In Dubai, we didn't take uh, every sector individually. We took it from an experience perspective. So when we launched this uh, strategy, we focus on three elements. The first element is to transfer the applicable government services to be 100% to be run on top of a blockchain. The second component uh, to support building the blockchain industry in Dubai by attracting startups and entrepreneurs in this industry. And the third component to, to be a, a global thought leader when it's come to, again, the blockchain uh, industry. When it's come to transferring the government services, we managed to bring almost 60 different uh, bodies, whether it be government or non-government, and we came up with uh, 20 use cases that by 2020, 
will be transferred to, uh, to be run on top of blockchain. One of them is the real estate, but other is uh, having uh, health, uh, health records on top of blockchain, educational records on top of blockchain, and so forth. And by bringing all these government agencies and non-government agencies in the same room, this by itself was a huge success because the main uh, challenge between uh, in any government, uh, not only in Dubai, but even globally, is the silos happen between government entities. They don't talk to each other. At the European Blockchain Center, we do workshops with politicians where we discuss what needs to be done and where to start. One very important building block is how you deal with responsibility and accountability. How do you regulate blockchain startups as they are virtual and decentralized and distributed in these uh, autonomous organizations. So it's really difficult to say how to regulate them and how, where they are creating value. So it's important for these governments and for these polit political decision makers to understand how this system works and how they, can, how they can contribute to growth and value creation in those countries. From some of the largest cities to small towns, everyone seems to be driven with this need for change. And the story of one small town on the outskirts of Zurich, Switzerland, to become an outlier is an inspirational story. The city council of Zug, five persons from five different parties. We wanted to know what's the difference, for example, between blockchain and Bitcoin. And so we invited a young student who explained us this difference. We didn't understand everything. <laughs> we decided we accept Bitcoin for payments of certain fees of our city ad administration, not tax paying. This would have been a little bit too risky. And we didn't ask any experts about this. We said, just do it. Let's try it. And uh, it was really the first time, I think, uh, in world history that uh, a city administration, that public administration, accepted a cryptocurrency. And I think it's a good and an easy story to explain people uh, what, what blockchain could be and uh, what use cases exist about uh, blockchain. Collaboration, working together and creating an ecosystem all seem to be the right approach. From creating think tanks to councils that help drive the mission. We've seen already many uh, uh, cities and even private sector approaching us uh, to uh, take lessons learned, but sometimes also taking the same implementation to be uh, uh, implemented in their uh, cities. Working very closely with the Estonian government, uh, working very closely with the uh, Indian government, the Maltese government, to share these experiences. Actually having the, the largest blockchain summit run here in Dubai and attracting more than 100 speakers and more than 6,000 attendees, this by itself is a success story by how we shared our experiences here in Dubai and transforming it to the, to the world by having this kind of a platform. A lot of cities are working on smart cities. Well, you can use blockchain to build real smart cities instead of only talking about it. So focus on the, on the topics which are already important in your city. For example, street lights with a sensor in it. And when the sensor uh, or the street light is broken, the sensor triggers a smart contract and the smart contract sends out uh, a micro job. And then um, a certified repair man has uh, fixed the street light, then he gets paid immediately. You can't only read about blockchain, you must also start these small experiments and the technology is good enough to, to, to run those experiments to understand better what will be the opportunities and also the challenges of blockchain for your own city. Blockchain technology is often called an enabler for trust, 
But what does this really mean? Does it mean that everything stored on blockchain is accurate? If it's not trust that technology enables, then what is it? There are these fundamental kind of psychological boundaries in older society, I would say. People who don't trust their governments at all because they've just had a very bad history of, uh, of data breaches and, and the government using their data uh, in, in, a, in an inefficient way. In Estonia, I can say that we have um, a very um, tough data privacy uh, laws uh, and uh, once your data is given to the state, they can't really use your data uh, if they don't have a ground for it. So this is, uh, this is a very serious offence if someone looks at your data and they don't have a reason to look at your data. And we also try to ask the data only once. Uh, so if you have given your data to the government, there's no reason why you should do it again. We made an app for the transportation of toxic waste. And when you transport toxic waste, there's a lot of administrative uh, burden. Almost every truck with waste will cross a border. But if the, the truck can only use this application until the border, it doesn't make sense at all. You must work together with the other countries the truck is passing. So it was immediately clear for us, we must work together with, the, with Belgium, with Germany. So we must collaborate with governments worldwide to share prototype, to share knowledge and to make decisions. You can also learn faster working together. Usually in Switzerland, trust in government is high. That's a good place for making tests with such a system. I think it's a better system than, for example, the e-voting systems we already have, but they are on a centralized computer. The best advantage this system has is you can always check is my vote, my ballot. This could be also a measure against corrupt states maybe. Uh, Okay, <laughs> the dictator would have to accept this system. <laughs> I think that that could be a problem. You also can be a little bit critical. That that's I think that's necessary. It's not to be, not to be enthusiastic. You must do, you must be open for this new technology. And uh, yeah, I think so. You get trust with daily experience, with simple use cases, with good stories to tell to the people. I think storytelling is the most important thing at the end. As of 2019, the global expansion of blockchain is seen as an unavoidable fact. Many analysts predict that 2019 will be the year of blockchain when it could break through and become a larger revolution than it is. And primarily driven by expansion of use cases that prove its benefits. The next few years will be a very short time to, to tell, but when we talk about five plus, ten plus years, the Internet of Things will definitely have an effect in the next five years, connected by some kind of identity. So I do believe that there has to be a global form of identity uh, if people are in different societies and they want to be connected with each other. And blockchain technology will play a major role there to connect these different databases. For normal people, uh, I don't think they should worry about blockchain uh, or AI or IoT. Um, uh, they're never going to use a blockchain. Uh, they may use cryptocurrencies, they may use applications that software developers build on blockchains, but uh, uh, they don't really use the World Wide Web protocols right now. They just use applications that, uh, that software developers have hopefully configured um, into compelling, elegant user interfaces where you can essentially have greater agency uh, in your professional life, uh, greater agency in your uh, social, political interactions. Uh, so you will be uh, more in control of what you're doing uh, and in greater ownership. If you think about kind of having in the future control over your digital traces, for now we know Facebook and the like, they have all the data and we have no control over them, even though the, this data belongs to me. If you think about using your mobile phone or your credit card or your Facebook account, 
we grew up with this notion of in order to be part of the digital world, we have to pay and we pay with our data. And we sort of bought into this argument. That is not a given. We can think of systems which are designed in a way that you stay in control of your digital traces. That is important for people to understand that this is potentially the paradigm shift. Uh, there could be something like a, pay, a Facebook on blockchain where you're always kind of in control of your data. That also means that you have to have a digital mindset which allows you actually to be able to manage your digital persona, your digital representation. And that is something we also have to learn. As we accept and know that we are responsible for our body, that we are also responsible and, in, and accountable for our digital person in the digital sphere. This technology is really working and it's really easy to, to, to use this technology. You only need a cell phone and not much more. And that's something even people in Africa, they have it, they can do it. It's a chance for people to, to have more democracy in the world and their real goal is to make the world better. It's not making money first, maybe after that, but the first step is to improve this world. And here technology can help. I feel like the things that you want to do in life, the, th the things that you're passionate about, what helps you to be good for yourself, to your friends and to the planet, that combination is where I feel this blockchain is beginning to help us be there. Combination of that AI and Internet of Things, that combination of intersection of those things and the people being able to follow their dreams. Ultimately, we want to live in harmony with our planet. We want to live in harmony with each other. Tomorrow is not here yet, and despite that fact, we are actively building the future with our actions. Whether it is blockchain or any other technology, perhaps something that has not even been invented yet, what is the path for us as a race, as humans on this planet to make this world a better place? It may seem unreasonable, but our ability to question things and create paths to do things differently has always led us to change the status quo. This is the right time to join the race, no matter what your pace is. This is the best possible environment to start learning about how the world is changing. This is a unique opportunity to be part of something where all of us can create value together and turn the dream of happiness, fulfillment, and positive change into reality. So say yes to positive change and accept that change is the only constant.